What's up Geek fans? Today we're diving into how to use lossless scaling effectively on the MSI Claw 8. This guy is all about the essentials, no fluff. Just need to know stuff so you can jump right in and get the most out of your gameplay. So, let's get into it. Before you start, you're gonna need, of course, uh, lossless scaling. You're gonna need to purchase and download this from Steam. And also, you're gonna need RTSS. So I'm gonna leave the link inside the description so you can download RTSS right there. RTSS is a free software so you don't need to pay anything. Mainly we're gonna use RTSS to limit the FPS of the game. And I'm gonna let you know a little later why. So let's fire up our game. In this case, Monster Hunter. All right, so as you all know, Monster Hunter Wilds is a very demanding game. So let's check out the settings that I use. Uh, mainly I use uh, 800p, uh, I think it's a sweet spot for this game. And I also turn off the V-Sync and I use the medium preset. Let's do that now. We're gonna use medium preset for this game. And we're gonna have the built-in frame generation enabled in this game. Alright, so as you can see right here, we're getting about 50... 40 about high 40 and low 50 in the FPS, which is not bad at all. But we are looking to get constant 60 FPS for this game. Yeah. Right, so as you can see right now, we're getting as low as low 40. So the FPS here is a little fluctuating. And it is known that the upscaling inside Monster Hunter is pretty bad. You're getting quite blurry image inside this game if you use uh, performance upscaling like uh, what we are using right now so it's a bit blurry as you can see all right so lossless scaling does come with uh, an upscaling feature and also comes with frame generation feature so we're gonna turn off the overlay before we go inside lossless scaling and set things up. All right, so first thing first, uh, it is the best practice to limit the FPS to 30, right? So here's the thing, when you use lossless scaling, it's gonna need a performance overhead from your device. So if you are running at 40 FPS normally, when you turn on the frame generation, uh, you can get as low as 30 base frame. Alright, so you need to make sure that you are running the game so constantly at at least uh, 35 or 40 FPS before you set up the FPS limiter to 30. That way it's gonna give you some headroom for the frame generation feature to work. So inside RTSS I'm gonna set the frame rate limit to 30 and basically 30 is a sweet spot for this device so you can just set the limit inside the global config and just leave it at 30 fps right and i'm gonna minimize rtss and we're gonna go inside lossless scaling so by default you're gonna see that you are created with the uh, frame generation 3.0 and the mode is fixed. Uh, currently everyone is talking about adaptive uh, mode but uh, adaptive mode is going to require even more performance headroom from your device. So for the MSI Claw 8, uh, I don't think adaptive is going to be the best method to do the frame generation since we don't have that much headroom to begin with. So we're going to stick with the fixed mode. We're going to set multiplier to 2. And let me explain a bit about the rendering options right here. Uh, as you can see, the max frame latency is going to be set to 3 by default. And you're going to see that G-Sync support, the draw FPS is on by default. G-Sync support, you want to leave it on because we have a VRR screen right here. And you want to leave draw FPS on so you can see the result of the frame generation. But you can turn it off later. All right. So that's basically everything you need to know uh, for now. So let's click on scale. 
It's going to count down. Right. And as you can see right here, we have our base frame rate locked at 30. And you can see that uh, the frame is multiplied by 2, so we get 60 stable FPS in this game. So we are getting a very smooth experience right here. A solid 60. And you also might have noticed the game already has built-in frame generation. So we are basically doing frame generation on top of the built-in frame generation. And that's gonna add some more latency in the input. So there's a config for that. So when you come back to rendering options, you're gonna see that we have frame latency set to three. So what you need to know is you're going to want to leave frame latency at 3 by default unless you use frame generation on top of built-in frame generation we want to reduce that to 1 the lower you have the max frame latency you're going to have lower latency in the input and the more frame latency you have you're going to have a smoother image but in this case since we have frame generation on top of the built-in frame generation we're going to want to leave that to 1 and we're gonna go back into the game. So the latency, it's surely still there, but it's better with the frame latency set to one. And let's fix that blurry image. So since the built-in upscaling feature is not very good inside this game, you can change the upscaling mode to native to get a sharper image. All right, so after you set the in-game upscaler to native, you wanna come back to lost that scaling and within the scaling option you want to use LS1 alright and right here you're going to want to change the mode to custom and what you want to change here is the resize before scaling turn to on and let me explain a bit about the factor option right here so 1.5 is going to be equivalent to balanced upscaler alright and 1.3 is going to be equivalent to quality. Alright, and 1.7 is going to be equivalent to performance. So basically you want to start with 1.3 and see if you're getting the result that you like. If you don't like the result, you can come back here and increase it by 0.2. So right here we're going to start by setting this to 1.3. Alright. And I'm not sure you can see the difference, but the LS1 upscaler is much better than the built-in FSR for this game. So as you can see right here, we, got, we are getting quite impressive image quality and we are getting stable 60 inside the Monster Hunter Wild. So let's see some gameplay. Pretty good shape. It looks like it was just left here. 
like someone abandoned it when they were in a hurry. They couldn't have gone far. Let's keep searching. not happy we're here. I hope nothing happened to them. We won't find out until we deal with this thing first. Right. Alright, so this thing is not mandatory, but uh, if you are familiar with lossless scaling and if you are using game profiles, it's gonna make your gaming experience more seamless. Alright, so once you set things up inside this default profile, you wanna set up the profile for that particular game. So when you run that game next time, you don't have to come back here in lossless scaling and set things up again. Alright, so after you finish setting up the profile for that game you want to press plus right here and you want to rename the profile for example monster hunter wow and right here inside the filters area you want to browse for the executable file of that game so if you're not sure where to find that executable file for the game you can always go inside the task manager and when you see your game inside the list you want to press and hold and you want to open file location and you're going to see that the executable file is highlighted here you want to press and hold and you want to copy as path all right and you're going to have a path to that file where you can just paste it right here all right and you want to turn on the auto scale and press add. So the next time that you start up the game, lossless scaling will automatically uh, scale the game for you. So you won't have to come back here and set things up again. All right? And that's going to give you the seamless experience. And that's about it guys. I hope you liked the video. And you may find that after you start using lossless scaling, you're going to want to use lossless scaling with all the games that you play to have that stable 60 FPS. So, I'll see you geeks in the next one. Peace out, guys.